up everyone, it's my channel. Today we're doing the reading for Sign of Aquarius. Keep in mind that this does not resonate for every Aquarius. If you'd like a personal reading, it's going to be the first link in the description down below. I'll be that. First link in the description down below for a personal reading. You can also go find my Etsy shop, my shirt store, my website, different social media platforms, and on as well as Patreon and Ko-Fi. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, feel free to do so. I do appreciate your donations. Um, Alright, let's see what Spirit has in store for yourself with this message for you. It's coming towards you. So, Aquarius. You're number four with Apo Lala. You are a peaceful being. Look at this. We have the yin and the yang. We have balance. We have peace. If spirits telling you you're a peaceful being. And at number 17, with new moon, fey, soul scribe. Alright, so we have a new moon. I think we're in like three quarters of the moon right now, but anyway. And number 36, with woo wing, wild, pure heart. So it's telling you that you're peaceful and you have a very pure heart, but it's also a very wild heart. At the same time, Aquarius. So let's read about these cards, because I don't really use this deck, so I don't... I haven't seen these cards. It's number four. It's the first one. It says, When this card is drawn forth, a sense of peace and new depths of serenity become truths for you. Simply breathe deeply and learn that your peaceful nature can become a daily source of delight, courage, of strength, and of beauty. Peace is like a quiet glade within, a sacred grove to which you can go and belong. Take strength and draw nourishment from this place within you. Be sure to visit it daily. Practice arts of peace within your life. Be strong, be free, be blessed, and at peace. When you come into this place daily, all around you will benefit. Do not mistake a confused peace with inaction. Being a peaceful activist is one of the most dynamic and powerful choices a being can make in this world, now and ever. When all around you is drama, and when all within you feels in turmoil, go to that place and know the truth of your being is peace, is serenity, is blessed, and is free. So as many legends say that Apollo is convert to a Buddhism, but the truth is that the Buddha and the Dragon Fae, Wisdom Keeper Apollo, shared many feelings, beliefs, and discussions, and the Buddha learned as much from the loving, compassionate heart of Apollo as Apollo did from the wide-eyed, wide-open eyes of Buddha. Apollo encourages you to take part in discussions about peace and will support you in finding ways to promote peace on personal, practical, and global levels. May be interested in speaking with people who live on the monastic life when this card is drawn. This card can also indicate that you have already experienced other lifetimes as a member of the Buddhist temple or monastery. Investigate this connection, but most of all, take care to be loving, peaceful, and harmonious in the present. Remember, Buddha loves laughter too. Since you are a peaceful being, bring more peace into your life. Maybe wishing for more peace and conflict on a personal level on a global scale be done with. Please do not put your energy into fighting the war, and set create peaceful moments wherever possible. This does not mean that you need to be weak or passive, but instead choose to draw incredible strength and do not waver from your choice to bring more peace in. Know that your conversations about peace and beliefs are bringing about change. People may have also told you lies about peaceful ways, meaning lack of strength. This is not so. Choose to be stronger more peaceful, and watch harmony and joy flower in your life. He says, invite peace into your life by choosing to work with people and beings whose beliefs are aligned with yours, and who are held with integrity. Understand that the conflict around you is a result of people attempting to control each other's hearts and minds and futures. Paula teaches us that the here and now, when tended with love, creates exciting and peaceful outcomes for us all. 17. It says, I rule myths and dreams which encapsulate truths about yourself and forms that you can work with. I rule creativity and the storyteller. 
and that which enchants. I am imagination, instinctive wisdom, and the archetypal energies and forms which cross cultural boundaries. I love the moon. Yeah, I love the moonlight. And I know only too well that the light of the crystal one can mean madness or enlightenment. I am the enchanted strange outsider, as are you. And so I understand when you feel you're not at home in this world, sometimes I know you feel as if you're not part of the mainstream and you feel isolated. Please remember that under the moonlight you cannot see the full spectrum of colors, but you can often see between the worlds and deep into the true essence of all. Do not feel ashamed of your strangeness and your shadows, they can be beautiful and mysterious if they are loved, embraced, and owned. If something is missing, and I have cast out a part of myself, and I'm, uh, I am now waiting to return. Just so like you, I'm nearly a time of action, where I must go in search of all of myself, but for this moment, I take solace in the reflections of the still and moonlight pool. And even in the stark lacework of the bare trees, I find truth and hope. You too have this quicksilver and primal energy. But I encourage you now to become practical and to deal with difficulties and separation and to dissolve your fears through action, strength, and acceptance. However, do not shut your own fears and intuition. What you resist and repress only regroups in the shadows and draws strength from denial. Instead, bring your fears out into the open and shine the sunlight on them. Embrace all of who you are. You accepted that social mask can now be dropped. You may now incorporate the power of heightened psychic ability, which can be hard to communicate and read accurately. Do not despair. You'll learn to understand and interpret your own psychic and symbolic language. If you practice, as I am now, in the sacred pool, if you do not make a conscious effort, your unconscious will continue to do the work on your behalf anyways. You may be a psychic nighttime being with fragile but powerful abilities, but you're also one of the elements in the dragon fake and teach you strength, give you the wisdom with which to use it well. As this lovely, lost for the moment, Dragon Fae Maiden has no name, and she is yet to come home with her whole self. But she is working on becoming whole, as you are now, and your true nature is being integrated into your social self. She is pining. It is that she is waiting for her dragon self to return, so she can be whole. But she is also at a stage of new beginnings, is obsessing over what she does not seem to have. It's conscious of a person who feels that their part of their true self is no longer with them. It speaks to of the yearning that we can experience. While she is wistful, she has hope, and she will grow stronger over the coming moon cycle, she has powerful visions. This card often indicates that the listener will be able to cleanse themselves and feel at home near beautiful bodies of water. It's also the card of connecting more to the moonlight and the subtle quicksilver light of the reflected sun. Alright, ladies. So, let's see if you're going to be having. Mm, so, we're embodying a more of a peaceful way. It's going to even be more of a in here. Alright? And you're going to be having more psychic visions here. And maybe you feel like you lost a part of yourself. Maybe this is right, reconnecting back with yourself here through all this right here. It says you may be feeling abandoned at this time or like a part of you who is missing. It can also indicate that you have been experiencing a false belief that all others do not like or accept you. In truth, when this card is revealed, it is that the new moon fae wishes to indicate that you do not like and accept yourself and that you may be choosing to hide from your own psychic ability in the wild self. Your spirit vision is shrouded by denial, withdrawal, depression, drinking, eating, sleeping, and drown out your inner voice and ability, fearful superstitions, feeling that your abilities are not godlike or god-given, guilt over psychic abilities and beliefs, dark night of the soul, experiencing total clarity from visions, misunderstanding the nature of psychic work, longing, yearning but inactive, sensation of drowning, memory problems, loss, or soul amnesia, water retention, tendency to turn to alcohol, food, or other substances to drown out psychic messages. So, it says, take yourself to a quiet place in nature and make a commitment to practicing your meditations, your readings, your own techniques for connecting with spirit on a more regular basis, particularly at the beginning of each lunar cycle. Also know that you need moonlight as well as beautiful brightness of sunlight. See that? There's that balance. So, moonlight will cleanse you and assist you in rebalancing gently and naturally. In this way, you'll learn to trust the part of your soul you have misplaced and 
in that trusted sanctuary, it can return to you. Remember, nothing is lost, and all that is truly yours shall return. Alright, because you can reclaim your soul back. So, it is through finding this quiet, peaceful place, alright? In nature, it could even be by water, under the moon, under the sunlight, you both here, alright? You'll be pulling yourself back in. Alright. 36. In the times of old, I said that only those who were pure could connect with those like myself. That the virgin could connect with the unicorn, that the child could see the meaning of God, that the fae would truly see into your heart and finding it corrupt would never appear to you. I'm here to tell you that your heart is pure, wild, and innocent. It is that you have forgotten how to see us, that you have been told in order to see us you must be perfect, that in order to see us you must be mad, unclean, broken. And if you have seen this, you face being shunned. So maybe you have been like experiencing people who've been kind of like shunning you because of your beliefs, because if you can see spirits or you can communicate with spirits because you can have psychic visions. Yeah. So as I am here to say that we appear to those who have looked into their hearts and have seen beyond the woundings because. Within you, there is a wild and untrammeled heart space, which is free of any taint. In that space, we can enter, and therefore, we can and will be seen again. You are not born into this world wrong or sinful. There may be karmic markings, but you are no sinner, nor are you corrupt or unworthy. Foster that which is wild and pure and good within you, and we will begin to appear and come forth. You will feel us in the wind, in the water, and see us in the fire, and hear our voices emanating from the heart of our mother, the earth. You're the child of a mother. We call her what you will, and at your core, you are one of the wild ones. That's my message for you. This is Ruby. It's a dragon made lord who has been both a dynastic ruler in human form and whose energy has entered the Chinese system, philosophy, and divination as the I Ching. His mind is very natural and honest, is an innately good nature, and encourages us to be the same and to know we can be the same no matter how we have behaved in the past. Truth and innocence of nature can be reclaimed and furthermore, these traits bring about good fortune personally and for Gaia. Again, and our mother it says know you are innocent and cultivate the aspect of yourself know that, that your innocence and goodness lies within you no matter what your actions have taken in the past the present moment is a chance to reclaim the pure and wild heart when you do that you'll be able to see feel and sense clearly the presence of magical beings including the dragon fate particularly the unicorn says, will also help you eat organically well and healthfully take nothing into your body without contemplating whether it will erode or grow the pure heart and act accordingly. Dance, sing, play music, and make love. All of these aspects, or all these acts, done with innocence, wild joy, are healing and part of the sacred act of love. So stay pure, and wild, and innocent. Develop a part of your daily life to the development of the pure, wild part of you. That's something beyond, beyond your control. Do not attempt to control and predict the outcome of all. Oh, that innocence also means that you have not known all, and come from that place, which is noble and humble. When we do so, our expectations and controlling behaviors depart, as does the drama. In their place come the insights and communication with the magical web of life, including mermaids, unicorns, centaurs, dragon fae, dryads, and other in-world beings that have yet been unseen by their eyes. All right, so, Aquarius. Like I said, it feels like you're going to be getting yourself, like parts of yourself back, and I feel like that's the psychic part of yourself that could connect with all these beings. It must be through meditation, embodying that peaceful aspect here, being under the sun and the moon. Like, maybe you've been around too many people that have kind of like shunned you in a way or told you negative things about this where you kind of like drifted away from this but you're bringing back brought back to it so 
Let's get some rooms to throw through some. If it's two dragon lovers, one being fire, it would be water. Also, these are the beings that you're connecting with. I forgot to say that. Clarence. We have the rose. So we are connecting with nature. The rose is here. And this Egyptian snake on it, which you're connecting to. We have Sun God Ra. And this dragon moon, which you're connecting to, which we are connecting to. Dragon thing here. We have this moth girl, which you're connecting to. Connecting with the moth, the stars, the night. Moth is like a spiritual initiation, transformation. We can have psychic gifts and abilities we have. We have the Aries. So you get all those placements or what around you. And the green man which you're connected to, which is that of nature. You have obsidian, which is a protective stone. You have that a commitment here, a commitment to love, a commitment to yourself, a commitment to spirit guides. We have to be linked. We have justice. Alright, so Aquarius. That's all I have for you. Like I said. First link description down below for a personal reading. Now let's go to my Etsy shop. I'm going to go buy something. Really appreciate that. Now let's go find the extended in the comments and you can see more content. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye guys.